Welcome to the kingdom.
You promised, Father. <laughs> you promised, God. You promised, God. When I praise, I know you hear me. There you go. Hallelujah. And Father, you alone deserve all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. We're grateful and thankful just to be able to walk in here and not limp in here. And most of all, nobody rolled us in here. So we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We don't take it for granted. It's because of your grace and your mercies which are new every morning. We still continue to lift up our country. The violence, the senseless killings, it's just so much, Lord. You can't go to the supermarket anymore without looking over your shoulder. You can't go to a parade without looking over your shoulder. Have mercy on America. Come on, talk to him. Have mercy on America. Have mercy on America. So, Father, we thank you again. And we lift up our country, our leaders, our president, our governor, our mayors, all those that make the laws and legislation of our country. Have mercy upon them and influence them. We pray for their salvation and safety. And we pray most of all, Father God, that you will keep us all safe doing this crazy time that we're living in. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a hand, praise. Fist bump somebody near you. Fist bump somebody near you. Tell them, glad to see you tonight. To our online family and friends, welcome to the Kingdom of God Christian Center where heaven and earth meet together. Thank you for joining us tonight. Those of you online, bless you. Love, peace, and blessings to you. Amen. You may be seated. Beloved, you may be seated. We're not going to prolong it. Y'all fanning already in this hot. I know, I know. Y'all fanning. Y'all fanning already in this hot. Thank y'all for coming out and supporting our um, midweek Bible study 75. Amen. Um, I'm not going to prolong it. I'm not sharing with you, but you will be hearing a word from the Lord. Let's receive tonight Minister Kim as she comes and shares with us the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Bless you. You may be seated in the house tonight. Thank you so very much. Those of you who have made your way to the house tonight, I want to say thank you. Hallelujah. It's a Tuesday night. Glory. And there's a word from the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Glory. Facebook, I want to say hello. YouTube, I want to say hello. Hallelujah. KGCC, I'd like to say hello. Glory. Welcome tonight. Tonight is Bible study. Hallelujah. And those of you who are riding the bus with us, we are in the one-year Bible tonight. We are studying tonight from July the 3rd. Hallelujah. Those of you who are, have not yet caught the bus, in your regular Bibles, we are in Psalms 1 tonight. All right? But before we go there, I need to go to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Lord, tonight, prepare me, this vessel of your gospel, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, O oh God. You cause the Holy Scriptures to be written for our understanding. Open our hearts to hear what the Holy Spirit has to teach us tonight. 
Guide me, I pray, as I seek to minister your word in truth. And as I open my mouth, O oh God, let your people hear you. And in this I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. First, before we get started, I'd like to say blessings and thank you so much to my two pastors, Pastors Fred and Michelle Moore. I'd like to say thank you. I love you both so much. Thank you so much for allowing this space in this time. But there's a word. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm excited. Can't wait to get to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to be in Psalms first chapter. Psalms 1 or July the 3rd if you are in the one year Bible. Before I go there, I'm going to give you my title. Hallelujah. The title is The Best Seat in the House. Where are you sitting? The best seat in the house. I'd like to know, where are you sitting? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 1.1. 1, 1. In the one-year Bible, it reads, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with the mockers. In your regular Bible, I am coming from King James Version. It reads, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sits or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Hallelujah. Another version, the Amplified Bible would say, Blessed or fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel or the advice of the wicked, nor sit down to rest in the seat of the scoffers or the ridiculers or those who mock God. Blessed are you who do not sit or rest, hallelujah, with those who mock God, hallelujah. Don't join in with those who have no use for God or those who discredit him. You we have no use for them. You give him his word and you, you do what the young folks say, move around. You keep on moving, hallelujah. The message version, if I could have the message version of that very verse, Psalms 1 and 1. This says, how well God must like you. You don't hang out at Sin Saloon. You don't slink around at Dead End Road. You don't go to Smart Mouth. Hallelujah, college. Hallelujah. I love that message version. I love it. Hallelujah. We got no business. Huh? Hallelujah. At Dead End Road. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Bless his name. When we go to events, be it a sporting event, the theater, be it a concert, or a ride on an airplane, we do extensive research. Hallelujah when purchasing our tickets to get the best seats, amen? We study the seating chart in the theater. We wanna choose a seat that has an unobstructed view, hallelujah. Most people like to sit at the window seat on the airplane. Why? Because they want the best view, hallelujah. When a couple is planning their wedding, hallelujah, great attention is paid to the seating chart. Yes, this is very important. This is to indicate who is sitting and having dinner at the same table. This can make for a wonderful night or it can be a disaster. 
Hallelujah. So the bride is very aware that she must take very good care of who is sitting with whom. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And have you noticed that children will fight over the front seat of the car? They call, I get front, yeah. right? And they fight. Who's going to ride in the front seat? And why do children fight over the front seat? Because they understand that that gives them the best view of the road ahead. Hallelujah. 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 In the natural, we want three things. We want the best view from our seat. Number two, we want an unobstructed view. Amen? And number three, we want good value for the money we've paid for those seats. Am I right? But in the spiritual, people, I want you to think about this. In the spiritual, we should also want the best view. Let's go to Hebrews 12 and 2. Come on and go with me to Hebrews 12 and 2. All right, here we go. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Looking through spiritual eyes to recognize where our faith begins and matures. And where is Jesus? Where did this verse say he was? Sitting in a place of position and privilege. He's at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. We also, in the spiritual, should want the best value. Hallelujah. Our seats represent our salvation. It represents our relationship. It represents favor. It represents rest and power. Hallelujah. So we should desire those things. Let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. We're going to read verses 2, 5 through 6. Ephesians 2, 5 through 6. And five reads, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, I know we have read this before. I know some of us have been through Ephesians and have read this, and I just kind of skimmed over it. Yeah, okay, it says I'm in heavenly places, but physically I'm not there. So, okay, it's the word, all right. But if you think about it, what does the Bible mean? What is Paul trying to tell us when he says we are sitting in heavenly places? That means we are in an intimate relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. We are in an intimate relationship. A union with Jesus. Um, that's what Paul is trying to tell us in this verse. Um, I want you in that verse to underline the word sit. This scripture explains that we are dwelling with Jesus in heavenly places. Hallelujah. In an intimate relationship with him. Colossians 3 and 1. Let's see what Colossians says about it. Colossians 3 and 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ, what? Sitteth on the right hand of God. Hallelujah. The reason that Jesus is right there, sitting at the right hand of God, because his redemptive work of the cross is finished. It's done. It's done. Christ's work is already done. 
So now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And what he does at the right hand of the Father is he turns his head every now and then just to hear what we have to say. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you serve a God like that who turns his head to hear what we have to say because he's sitting in a place of position and privilege. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are no chairs in a tabernacle. You ever thought about that? Did you ever read that? There's no chairs in the tabernacle. Just imagine in this house, in any church, if you went in and there were no chairs, but there was Pastor Moore at the front, and we come in, in and out, giving him our offerings, our sin offerings. See, there were no chairs in the tabernacles because the priest's work is never done. Huh? Hallelujah. Not like Christ. Christ's work was done on the cross, but a priest's job is never done. Huh? Hallelujah. Why? Because we keep sinning over and over and over again. So that door becomes a revolving door because huh? some of us keep coming in and out, in and out. So we keep coming into the priest huh? to offer our sacrifices of our sins. Hallelujah. We want the redemptive work of the priest. But I'll tell you, the priest, there's no redemption from sins. They can accept your offerings. But only Christ has the power to redeem us from our sins. Hallelujah. So there are no chairs in the tabernacle. Hallelujah. The work is never done. Hallelujah. Because Ephesians 2, 6 says, we are seated with Christ. We have the opportunity daily to enter his rest. And we'll talk about rest tonight. Rest is a profound peace that God gives to those who love and obey him. No matter what the circumstances, rest is the ability to face the future with confidence despite what I see happening around me. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. This was a song of Judah. Judah says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him, because he trusteth in the Lord. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. Resting in God allows you to work from a position of rest. It allows you to parent from a position of rest. It allows you to run your business from a position of rest. It allows you pastor to pastor this church from a position of rest. Rest in God. Hallelujah. There's no need to be filled with stress and anxiety or worry. Because when we choose to rest and rely on him and turn every situation over to him, we demonstrate his sovereignty. We demonstrate that he has control over our lives. Hallelujah. Tonight, I have two chairs here. I have this chair, which is a nice sized chair, right? With nice sturdy legs, is that right? Yeah. It's not rocking back and forth. It's a nice, sturdy chair. But then, hmm, I have this chair. <laughs> Hallelujah. This chair. Look at me. And look at this chair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This chair. This is a seat. This one also is a seat. Hallelujah. Let's compare the two. This one is larger. <laughs> this one is smaller. This one is more sturdy. This one is less sturdy. Am I right? All right. So let's look at the larger chair. I'm going to have a seat in the larger chair. Hallelujah. You see that I'm sitting down. I didn't even have to look back. You know why? Because I have confidence that this chair can hold my weight. So I didn't have to check. I didn't have to hold on. I didn't have to look. I had pure confidence that this chair can hold my physical weight. 
Hallelujah. So I want you tonight to look at this chair and look at it as Christ. Hallelujah. Who can bear the weight of our burdens in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret because we have confidence that this chair, this Christ has the ability to hold the burdens of our weight of our burdens. Am I right? Hallelujah. But oh boy, when I go to this chair, and I know some of you want me to try to sit down in this chair. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to embarrass Pastor Moore that way. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I don't believe this chair has the ability to hold the weight of me physically or my burdens. Hallelujah. Because they are many. But this chair, I don't believe, has been built. The manufacturer didn't mean for a lot of weight to be put on this chair. Hallelujah. They, this chair I got out of the children's church. It was made for a child, hallelujah, who don't have any burdens in the name of Jesus. It was made for little, a little child, a small child, a baby who had no responsibilities, who don't have an illness, hallelujah, weighing in on them, who don't have the light bill that's due, that's weighing in on them. This was made for a child who don't have to worry about if I'm going to be able to put gas in my car tomorrow. This chair was made for a child who has no worries, who lays down at night with no troubles in the name of Jesus. But oh God, hallelujah, this chair, hallelujah, can bear the weight of everything that I'm going through. This chair can bear the weight of when I need to meet that judge in the courtroom. This chair can bear the weight of when I need to meet that surgeon. Hallelujah in the operating room. This chair, hallelujah, can bear the weight when the mortgage is due, when the rent is due, when the light bill is due, when my belly is empty. This chair has the ability to handle the weight of my burdens in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So tonight, hallelujah, we have the best seat in the house. Tell me tonight, which seat are you sitting in? Hallelujah. Where are you sitting tonight? In the name of Jesus. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory. This chair represents those times. This one represents the times when we have pride. <laughs> we think we can handle those things on our own. We think we can take care of life's battles without God. That's what this chair represents. Hallelujah. You see how large that chair is? You see how small this chair is? This chair represents when I think I can do it without him. Hallelujah. This chair represents when I turn it all over to him. Hallelujah. I grew up in a church, 13 years old. Reverend S.L. Roberson, uh, Metropolitan Memorial, uh, Full Gospel Baptist Church. Uh, hallelujah. His favorite saying was, let go uh, and let God. At a 13-year-old, I didn't know what he was talking about. I thought, oh, that's just what the old folks say. Let go and let God. But it wasn't until I grew up and had some things I needed to let go of that I understand what Dr. Reverend S.L. Roberson was talking about when he said let go and let God. Hallelujah. We can't handle it. Hallelujah. Don't believe the lie when people say God helps those who helps himself. That is not biblical in the name of Jesus. There is nowhere in this word will you find that God helps those who help themselves. Because God understands. He created us. We are his workmanship, right? He understands. We don't have the ability, hallelujah, to help ourselves without him. But oh God, when I give it to him, when I allow him to be God, here I go. I have the, the 
confidence uh, to sit down and rest in him. You see, I didn't turn around. You see, I didn't hold on because I learned how to let go and let God. We are still carrying things from our childhood. We need to let them go and let God be God. Hallelujah. You have the best seat in the house. Where are you sitting? Where are you sitting? Those of you who are watching tonight from your house, and those of you who are in the house tonight, there is a declaration that I'd like to make over you tonight. The best seat in the house, tell me where are you sitting? Hallelujah. Don't sit amongst the scornful. Don't sit amongst the people who mock God. Don't sit around people who says there is no God. You tell them about him and you keep moving. But tonight, there is a declaration that I must make. The Holy Spirit has led me to make a declaration over you tonight. Those of you at home, Hallelujah. If you trust God as your Savior, if you are willing to let go and let God handle every circumstance and every situation, this declaration is for you tonight. Please receive it. It's straight from the Holy Spirit. Tonight, in the spirit of divine agreement, I decree that your energy is being renewed. I speak energy vitality, life, and longevity over you tonight. I break off of you exhaustion, fatigue, anxiety, fear, and worry. I say in the name of Jesus, all of your emotional and bodily functions, your systems, your hormones, your cells, your organs are in operating properly the way that God created them and shall not cause you to be worn out or tired. I bind up stress causing circumstances that would make you worry, that would make you weary. Now in the name of Jesus, I replace them with the unspeakable joy and glory. I declare that the life of God flows through you freely, fresh and anew tonight in the name of Jesus. And if you believe it, come on and say if you believe it, I receive it. I receive it because I believe it. Hallelujah. We have the best seat in the house. Somebody tell me, where are you sitting? God bless you and thank you for your time. Wow. Come on, give God a hand praise. Wow. Wow. But, wow. Wow. You, you can be seated. Wow. I know why you're standing because it's like a buffet line. You want to come around for seconds. <laughs> Paul and Joseph, are y'all with me? I, I wanted to come around for seconds. Yeah, I, I wanted her to deal with that little chair right there. And then I wanted her to tell me, now you come sit right here, Pastor, and don't you move. Come on, give Minister Kim a hand. I am so blessed to be in the company of able men and women that can bring us a quality word. Don't give up the previous week and what, what seat are you sitting in, man? I mean, you could have worked them seats all day because I'm not going to lie to you. I was feeling that. You, I wanted to come to just see what that red seat felt like just to be... If I'm being honest, Lisa, brother wanted to get all in the video. I wanted to get all up there <laughs> and see what the Red Sea felt like, Nate, amen. But I'm so blessed because God knows what we need. Anybody needed that? <laughs> Streaming land, if you're honest, did you need that? We needed that. 
So, Father, we're grateful and thankful. We ain't going to try to belabor the point you said what you want to say. And I will not insult you by trying to come back and say anything other than what you've already said. I will not interrupt you or add to what you've said. You say it what you wanted to say. Nothing else needed to be added but an amen. amen. So thank you, Lord, for encouraging us, for ministering to us. Thank you for using the vessel tonight. Thank you, Father God, for a timely word. Receive our minister now. She comes and closes. Minister, see as she comes and closes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful word. I know what seat I'm in. Oh, to God be the glory. Let's say our, our covenant. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, with him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare and the fowlers and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thy dress of good against the stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall I trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life would I satisfy him and show him my salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. So may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, giving you his rest, his peace, his security, and his abundant increase. May you be blessed coming in as you will be blessed going out. Repeat after me. Each one, reach one for him before he comes. Each one, reach some for him before he comes. Each one, bring one for him before he comes. You have entered into worship. Now may you exit out to witness. In the name of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Everyone say, I agree. I receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. You are dismissed.